The first upgrade of the furnace takes the name of Civil Furnace. It will allow you to refine new materials, including the tempered glass, soup pot, manganese steel bar, steel bar, and chromium steel bar. Before you will be able to build it, you have to go to the top right side of the Sandrock City, where you need to enter inside the research center. Inside this building you will find an NPC called Chi you have to speak to. Next, from the social options you have to select that hood called the research. Here, if you already have a furnace, you will be able to research a civil furnace as well. It requires 14 data disks to start the research and it will take 4 days to complete. You also can speed up the process by paying extra data disks as well. So, let's discuss how to obtain the data disks. The easier way to obtain them is by going exactly to the bottom right side from your workshop where you will find the Eufala salvage shop. By interacting with the cash desk in the right corner you will be able to buy up to 10 data disks each day for a price of 20 gold each. If you don't want to spend gold, craft a stone pick hammer at your work table. Next, on the right side from Eofala's salvage shop, enter inside the salvage area. Here you will find some pile of junk you can mine down. Doing so has a random chance to drop several times the data disks. For a more efficient way, you have to progress in the storyline until you will repair the crane leaf that will allow you to access the ancient ruins. Inside this dungeon series, you will be able to mine down the terrain. Doing so has a high chance to drop several data disks. For the passive way, you have to progress in the mine storyline until you will unlock in the bottom left corner of the Sandrock City the Civil Corpse. In the left corner of this building, you will find a board you can interact with. Next, you have to select the hazardous ruins. Next, using the Zydeus, you can decide how many uh, runs they will do and how many days you want to wait for the result. Based on what you choose, uh, the price will change. You can post up to 3 commissions at a time. After the commissions will be completed, you will receive a mail with the rewards forecasted in the board. If you max out all the sliders, you will notice that you will be able to obtain 35 data disks for each commission. This means that you will be able to get up to 105 data disks passively from these 3 commissions. A bonus tip, while progressing in the mine storyline, sometimes you will visit several dungeons. Pay attention at the terrain in this dungeon, because sometimes you will be able to mine it down, the same way you do in the ancient ruins. The cool part about these dungeons is that the stamina won't be depleted while mining. Plus the day-night cycle will be paused until you will finish them, so you can take your time to mine all them down. If you do, from some of these dungeons, you will literally obtain for free over 200 data disks. At this point, after the research will be done, you will receive a mail from the research center. Acquiring the item attached to it, you will learn the civil furnace recipe. At this point, you have two solutions in order to obtain it. The first is to build a new one using the assembly station. But you also can uh, interact with a standard furnace and access its upgrade menu in order to upgrade it to the civil level. In both cases, you will need some bronze pipes, bloodstone core, and marble. In case of the upgrade version, you will need also a bronze stick and a machine upgrade kit. While instead in the one you will be able to build, you need a bronze frame. Speaking about the bronze pipes, that is the first ingredient. To obtain this resource, you have to interact with a grinder. This will allow you to access its recipe that will require two bronze bars in order to produce one bronze pipe. Speaking about the bronze bars you need for this recipe, before you will be able to obtain it, you have to progress in the mine storyline until you will build a crane lift that will allow you to access the abandoned ruins. Immediately after, you can go above your workshop, where you will find a hammer time shop, from where you will be able to buy up to 20 bronze bars each day for a price of 47 gold each. In case you don't want to buy them, go back to your workshop and interact with the furnace, where you will find a recipe that will allow you to convert 3 copper ore and 2 tin ore into 1 bronze bar. 
To obtain the copper ore you need for this recipe, reach the abandoned ruins. In this dungeon you will find several copper nodes you will be able to mine in order to obtain the copper ore. Occasionally you will get it also by mining the terrain. In alternative, if you want to save your stamina, you can reach the Eufala salvage shop to the bottom right side from your workshop. Here you will be able to buy up to 50 copper ore each day for a price of 4 gold each. Speaking about the tin ore, you need to visit again the abandoned ruins. Inside these dungeons you have to proceed further until reaching the third level. In fact, only from this level you will find some tin ore nodes. Mining them will give you the tin ore you need. Occasionally from the third level you also will find the tin ore by mining the terrain as well. In case you want to obtain the tin ore and also save your stamina, you can do so by visiting the Eufala salvage shop. In the right corner of this building you will find a cash desk you have to interact with. This will allow you to buy up to 30 tin ore each day for a price of 8 gold. Another way to obtain the bronze bars can be achieved after you will complete the quest that will require you to repair the hydrogel. The next day, go to the bottom right side from your workshop and visit the Ufala salvage junkyard, where you will find a new type of junk called ruined boost frame. Mining it down, besides receiving other ingredients, you will also obtain some bronze bars. Speaking about the bloodstone core, that is the second ingredient. To farm it, you have to interact with an intermediate work table. This will allow you to access its recipe that will require 3 bloodstone and 5 clay to produce 1 bloodstone core. Speaking about the bloodstone you need for this recipe, you will be able to start farming it after you will obtain the bronze pig hammer. Thanks to this tool, you will be able to start mining the hard rocks that drops the bloodstone. If you want to obtain some without using your stamina, visit the Amira home under the temple in the central part of the city. From her shop you will be able to buy up to 2 bloodstone each day for a price of 42 gold each. For the next method you have to access the abandoned ruins. Hidden inside some of the side areas you will find some chests that contain the bloodstone. To find them easier you have to upgrade your treasure detector. To be precise, you have to raise the level of the focus lens till the level 3. This will highlight the treasure box location with the same icon of the relic objects. You can find these materials also while exploring the secret caves and the mine quest dungeons. During these activities you have to pay attention to loot all the junk piles because occasionally they will drop you some bloodstone. Same can happen by destroying the crates you will find inside these locations. One of the best ways to obtain this resource can be done after you will build the ore refinery. Thanks to it you will be able to convert the stone into bloodstone. For the next method you have to proceed in the mine storyline until you will receive the quest to repair the hydrogel. During this questline you will visit a new location called the bridge. After you will complete it the first time, you will be able to revisit it how many times you want and you will find the entrance in the bottom left side of the city. To enter inside, you will need to use 120 stamina each run. At the end of each run, you will be able to loot a treasure chest containing some ruins tokens. At the entrance of this dungeon, you will be able to convert these tokens into the bloodstone as well. Completing the first time the bridge hazardous ruins, you also will unlock the civil corpse that can be found slightly under the hazardous ruins location in the map. Inside it, in front of the staircase, you will find a board you can interact with. This will allow you to post a commission in order to obtain several resources. Some of this commission will give you as a reward some tokens. Once you have them, interact with the cash desk in the same building in order to be able to convert them into the bloodstone. Speaking about the clay, that is the second ingredient of the bloodstone core recipe, you need to reach the abandoned dreams. Inside this dungeon you will find the terrain that can be destroyed. Doing so has a random chance to drop the clay you need. In alternative, you have to enter inside the Amira's shop under the temple. Interacting with the cash desk, you will be able to buy up to 15 clay. 
Keep in mind that you won't be able to buy the clay from this shop until you will complete a specific side quest called the Moonlighter. This quest will start automatically after Amira will drop some clay in front of your house. This event will occur the next day after you will receive the main quest called The Show Must Go On. Anyway, once you have the side quest, you will need to give to Amira 5 units of clay each day. By doing so 3 times, you will complete the quest and therefore you will unlock the item in the shop. Speaking about the marble that is the last common ingredient, before you will be able to farm it, you first need to obtain a bronze pick hammer. Thanks to it, you will be able to mine down the monuments and the hard rocks you will find around your workshop. Hard rocks will give you a lower amount of marble compared to monuments. After you will obtain your first weapon, you also will be able to obtain some marble by defeating some moving cactuses called the Thorny Jumper. If you don't want to use your stamina and obtain some marble easy, you have to reach the construction junction located in the central part of the city. Close to the entrance, you will find a cash desk you have to interact with, where you will be able to buy up to 25 marble for a price of 12 gold each. At the margins of the area around the city, you will find also some uh, level 28 enemies called Rock and Roll. Defeating them will always will reward you with some marble as well. Once you will unlock the desert located to the left from the city, you will be able to find some raw materials nodes. Mining them down will allow you to find the marble and other materials you will need later on. In the same desert you will find also another enemy called the Pensky that will reward you with some marble if you will defeat them. In case you decided to build it, you will need to learn about the bronze frame. Anyway, to obtain this resource you have to interact with an intermediate work table, from where you will be able to use its recipe that will convert 5 bronze bars and 4 bronze rivets into 1 bronze frame. In order to obtain the bronze rivet for this recipe, before you will be able to farm it, reach the bottom right side of the Sandrock City, where you have to enter inside the Commerce Guild. Here, immediately on the right, interact with the cash desk. This will allow you to buy the bronze rivet recipe that will cost uh, around 36 gold. Now go back to your workshop and interact with the grinder. This will allow you to access the new recipe that will convert one bronze bar into two bronze rivets. Speaking about the bronze bars that you will need for the bronze frame and the bronze rivet as well, it was already explained in this video, so use the timestamp if you missed it. Well, in case you decided to upgrade it, you need also to learn about the bronze stick. To obtain it, interact with a processor and you will find a recipe that will require two bronze bars in order to produce one bronze stick. For the bronze bars you need for this recipe, it was already explained in this video, so use the timestamp if you missed it. Finally, it's time to speak about the last ingredient of the upgrade, that is the machine upgrade kit. For the first kit, I suggest you to reach the central upper area of the city, where you will find the temple. From its back door, uh, look to the right and you will notice under the huge red rock a chest. To bring it down, you have to pop the balloon above the chest using a throwing rock. You can find one of these rocks uh, behind the base of the red stone. Anyway, speaking about the chest, once it will fall down, reach its location and open it and you will obtain the first machine upgrade kit. For the next method, before you will be able to farm it, you have to craft any type of weapon like a stone sword. Then around your workshop search for some yakmels and roosters. There are two types of yakmels, the normal and the alpha. The last one has a chance to drop the machine upgrade kit. For the rooster, you have to search the one called the Koha Doodly Doom, that is the one that drops the machine upgrade kit. If you want to obtain these kits without using the stamina, reach the shop you will find above your workshop called the Hammer Time. Here you will be able to buy up to 5 machine upgrade kits each day for a price of 128 gold each.